and I work on the interface between resilience and sustainability and land use and how those all fit together. And uh, today I was presenting on how to make planning uh, for infrastructure, how to design infrastructure in a time of uncertainty. And because of climate change, the predictive value that we have to understand the weather of the future is really low. And yet natural systems are adapting to climate change already, but our human systems aren't. And so I laid out strategies about how we can build infrastructure that's flexible and adaptable to an uncertain future. One thing you wanted to look at is what are the attributes of resilient systems that are found in nature? And so resilient systems in nature have a lot of diversity of scale, of species, of cultures. So social and natural systems are that are more diverse or more flexible and adaptable. Likewise, natural systems that are more connected are more flexible and adaptable. Same with humans, when we have broader connectivity between people, we have more strategies and more intelligence to draw on. Same with identity, uh, like the story, like each culture has a story about itself or a family has a story about itself. That story is how people have their identity. And if you're resilient, you build on the identity and you say the reason that we're making these investments is for future generations, for our culture, for our family, for our city. Water professionals are huge in adapting to climate change because while it's air pollution, carbon, that's causing the climate to shift, the most immediate manifestation is in flooding and in drought and in shifting ecosystems, you know, ice melting and snow moving. So the water professionals are the front line in adapting to climate change. They need to not just resist, they need to become adaptable and flexible. So they're the number one entities that actually need to be working on this. They're also the most skilled at it because they have a, a lot of understanding of ecological systems but they also understand human and built systems. And so water professionals are the leaders that need to lead this but most of them have been trained to think that they just need to engineer the system to protect against these high water events based on extreme events when actually what they need to do is design these systems to be flexible and adaptable. And they can do that, uh, and they're the ones to do it, so that's why they're really the key.